Good afternoon, it's Dr. Kirsty. It's April 13th, 2020. Um, one of my favorite sequences that I do for myself on a daily basis is resetting my pelvis, regrounding into my root chakra, and offering support in alignment, um, allowing my sacrum to find more balance between the two hip bones. Um, so for me, um, I have some congenitive issues, a uh, fusion in my left subtalar. So walking and certain activities is quite challenging when I'm loading weight or so balancing the pelvis in relationship to that because it creates um, torsion, if you will, up through my system. So the more I can root and ground, the better off I am. And of course, my cats are going to visit us today. So we're going to start seated in Varasana, hero's pose, which is bent knees position. If that's uncomfortable for you, take a seat that is supportive for your body. And the style I teach is myofascial yoga, myo meaning the muscles and fascia being the connective tissue that surrounds each muscle, nerve, bone, all different aspects, including the brain of the body. So I'm using more of a structural therapist point of view in how I will teach you. I will draw on dynamic and static postures to allow for freedom. My biggest invitation is to stay behind pain. Don't create pain in the body. Come out of anything that offers discomfort and protect your body first. So in Varasana, lower the gaze over the nose. Wiggle up through the spine just a little bit. Find what I call loopsy goosey or seaweed or some kind of looseness in the spine. We're gonna protect the spine, not being a rigid pull, but more fluid. Even check front to back a little bit. Beautiful. And now we're gonna bring our hands just in front of the heart, fingertips are forward. Palms come together, which will connect you down into the feet. So imagine connection at the base, through the ankles. I have to push my cat slightly out of the way. <laughs> Noticing the inhale coming in through the nose and out. Let's start with an ohm to bring in spirit. Nice big inhale in. Oh. Relaxing the hands down, palms face down, taking an inner look, inner gaze inside, connecting to your wisdom body. Inviting the breath to come all the way down into the pelvic bowl. Filling it up like a balloon in all directions. Long fluid exhalation softening your lower ribs, really completing your exhalation phase, not getting locked in inhale or exhale. Explore the fluidity between the inhale and the exhale. Allowing your spine to be soft, flexible, juicy, the chatter in your mind begins to take over, just bring the focus back on the breath. 
and allow the chatter to float through the brain like a cloud in the big blue sky. Practicing non-attachment. Feeling the slight undulation of the spine as you breathe in and out. Deepening your awareness of space inside the body. More room for the pelvis, rib cage, cranium. Expand your inhale and expand the exhale. Relax your jaw, soften the back of your tongue. And reach the base of the nose to the sides of the room. Bringing your hands on top of your heart, connect to Purusha, inner light of awareness. The heart is a center, a fulcrum of the body in balance. And tune in to your attention for your practice today. Maybe it is to ground and root in the pelvis. Allow more energy to move through your system. More gratitude, warmth, kindness, compassion. Setting the intention by bringing the hands together in namaste at the forehead. So we'll use a belt or strap today. You can use a scarf if you don't have a yoga strap, a tennis ball, and a blanket, and a block, or you can use a soccer ball if you, or a basketball or a hard back hook to work for that. We're going to come right down onto our backs today. This is more floor work. Keep your knees bent, lower down nice and slow. Have your blanket folded in a way that's supportive of your body. We're going to start, start right away with some knee squeezes. Knee squeezes engages the inner thigh muscles, the adductors, and helps align the support at the base of the pelvis. I use knee squeezes in almost every class I teach. Rest your hands just inside the hip bones, feeling your belly, your abdomen. Relax your shoulders, find neutral neck, find your toes, the little pads. Take a nice big inhale, press behind all the toes, anchored into the heel. Exhale, squeeze the knees for two, three, four, and five. And relax that down. And we're using about 20% effort here. This is based off of muscle energy technique and body work. Inhale, find your toes, you can wiggle them. Find the heel, inhale, anchor. Exhale, without lifting the pelvis, Squeeze for two, three, four, 
and five. Relax that down, soften through your pelvis. And one more time, anchor through the base of the feet, heels, exhale, squeeze. Find your exhale, complete it out. And relax that down. Now we're gonna take this into what I call garlic press. Inhale, draw the right knee in only. Now bring in the left for two, three, four, and five, and let that go. Opposite side, inhale, draw on the left knee, bring in the right, squeeze, drop the pelvis south towards the heel. Lengthening from pubic bone through navel. And relax that down. Soften through the pelvic floor and then squeeze both sides equally. We're going to set the block to the side. We're going to come into windshield wiping. Lift your inhale and your right leg first, drop the knee in, and exhale, press behind each toe, awakening the intrinsic foot muscles. Come onto the pinky side of the foot, and inhale, come back through. Each toe gets activated, awakened. Inhale, drop in medial. Exhale, drop out. Check in with your sense of how your hip joint is doing, your connection of your pelvis down to your feet. Stay with your breath. And switch sides three times on the left side. Inhale, drop medial. Press behind each toe. Rotate outwards, half frog. And inhale, drop medial again. Exhale, rotate, back out. Inhale to center. Exhale, out to the side. If you don't have a tennis ball, you can continue with windshield wipers. If you do have a tennis ball, we're going to awaken up our back pocket muscles, glute medius or gluteus medius. So right side, pick up, slip it to the top of where your back pocket of your jeans are. You're going to find a little bit of a sensational bit and we'll just start with windshield wiping again. This is a little myofascial release. Do not make this painful. It will be slightly sensationful, but stay behind pain. If the muscles are screwing up in your face, you're doing too much. Soft cheeks, soft jaw, inhale and exhale. And then we're going to move that down. Halfway down the sacrum, just a little bit further, keeping it kind of medial between the sacrum and the butt muscles to piriformis. And again, be gentle here. Stay with your breath, breathing all the way into your pelvic bowl. And we're awakening the kundalini that's coiled at the base of the spine. We're creating stability through the pelvis and aliveness, awakening any kind of um, lack of awareness of sensation. Maybe you've been cut off from a fall or some injury in the past. If you're comfortable with this one, we're going to bring the tennis ball just inside your sits bone, the ischial tuberosity. So you'll find that. That takes a little bit more work, maybe. Take it a little bit wider. And this is for sacral tuberous ligament. It's a strong ligament that runs from the sacrum, ties it down into the back of the leg, keeps that tail from popping up. And we're just going to 
Release the tension. Don't over-release this. This is very soft and subtle. And that's just three times. And then we'll switch sides. So back pocket muscle glute medius on the left. Pick up your hips a little bit. Drop it into the back pocket. And rotate out. You think about this as like um, bringing, well, actually what we're doing is we're squeezing out the water that's in the fascia right now. And when we take the ball away and that tissue rests, it's gonna get new water into the tissue and it's gonna rehydrate it. Dropping halfway down, piriformis, and be mindful here not to trigger too much sensation. And last one, sacral tuberous ligament. Just inside of the sits bone. Allow that tennis ball to kind of hook onto those tissues. You're going to take it a little bit wider. And release that. Let's hug knees to chest for a moment. See how that feels. You can even rock around, creating some movement through the hip bones. Full inhales and exhales. And we're gonna keep the right leg hugged and come back to bent knee. Bent knee position is gonna support your left hip bone to drop down and back. Soft yoking of the right foot, which is dorsiflexion, and take that knee out towards the armpit. Scan your body, notice where you feel the stretch. Take a breath into your kidney housed on the back body and the base of the lower ribs, in front of your spine. And then take the hug of the knee in towards the heart, breastbone. Notice any shift. And how the stretch and the sensation feels. Keep it feeling good. And then straighten through the right leg, interlace your hands back on the hamstrings for doing Paschimottasana. Reach your heel towards the ceiling, ceiling if that's comfortable. You can keep a soft knee bend. You can gaze towards your big toes or close your eyes. Have a loose spine, soft shoulder blades. Takes about five long fluid breaths to start changing the fascia. Complete exhalation out. And we'll begin to point and flex through the foot. Feel free to be a little bouncy here, like Tigger. And then draw big circles with your toes, opening up the ankle joint. Your ankle joint is really important to maintain health. It's where a lot of proprioception comes up, balance, sending signals up to your brain. Change your direction if you haven't already. 
I'm gonna hug it out. We're gonna grab our straps or scarf to go into abduction. Abduction, straighten the leg. Take your left hand onto your left hip. We wanna keep that left hip down and back. And if you have a bolster, you can use a bolster to catch your leg. softening the inner thigh of the right leg, keeping it stable on the opposite hip. We're not creating torsion or rotation through the hips here. We're learning how to use our core to support us in balance. See if you can melt a little bit further into this, letting go of the inner thigh. And we're not trying to bring the ankle high up overhead. You can just keep the ankle maybe a little bit further away from the head, lower. That's gonna be more protective. We all have different body types. If you have Viking heritage, you're more likely to have fascia that is harder to stretch because it keeps you warm in the cold. Inhale, bring that up. Nice and slow, cross it over the midline. Switch the strap into your left hand. You could bring your right arm out to a T position for support, stay neutral in your neck, or you can counter gaze over the right shoulder as you open up and stretch the right lateral line of the leg. Look long with your eyeballs or keep the eyes closed. Inhale, bring that back up, hug it out. Now we'll just set the strap to the side and we'll switch. Hug back with the left knee. Take it out towards the armpit. Come back into your full fluid breaths. Take that hug in towards your breastbone. Notice where you feel the change in the stretch. Have an awareness of the space around you. Sounds, smells. Sensation of warmth or cold. Noticing your left kidney, base of the lower ribs and the back body. Take the breath there as well. And Pashimottasana extend through the left leg. Interlace the hands back on the hamstrings here. You can have a soft bend in the knee. Take it bigger if that's easier for you. Reach the heel to the sky. Try to stay neutral in your neck. My tendency is to want to go lifting the chin. So I always have to remind myself. Five deep breaths here. And begin to point and flex. Notice where you feel the action front or back of the leg or maybe equal. And 
And then big circles with the toes, opening up the ankle. And switch. And hug that back. Strap to the base of the toes, stand through the leg. Right hand onto right hip. We're gonna keep that right hip down and back, mitigating any torsion. Exhale, lower the foot out, exploring that movement. And softening your inner thigh. I'm not trying to bring that head up like a ballerina, excuse me, the foot. Just try to keep that foot away from the head. Stay soft in your hip joint. All our hip joints have different shapes, sizes. You can melt into this a little bit further. Inhale, bring that back up using your core. Cross it over midline. Bring the arms out to a T position here on the left hand. Feeling the stretch going down the side of the leg. And inhale, bring that back up, hug it out. Take off the strap, set it to the side. Come back to bent knee position. Bring your arms up to a T, palms into the earth. We're gonna lower the knees up to the right first. You're about hip width apart. Heels might be aligned with your sits bones. Inhale at the top, exhale, lower the knees up to the right. Stay neutral in the deck or counter gaze over the left shoulder. Stay with your breath here. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, lower to the left with the knees. Counter gaze over the right shoulder. It's comfortable for your neck. Inhale, come back to center. If you have more time, you can just go back and forth, one breath, one movement. But today we're gonna to go to Dwi Padipitam, which is two-legged pose. It is not a bridge, so we do not try to create a back bend in the upper chest. We're really creating straight line, slowly, between the knees and the shoulders. I'm gonna start with reclining cat-cow first. Reach your fingertips towards your heels. Best you can, you're going to bring the ankles underneath the knees. Neutral in your neck. And reach through the tail first. Make your way up the spine, lift the chin. Send the eyeballs up behind you. Get curious with your eyes. Exhale. Start with the tail first. Draw the hips down and back. And let the rest of the spine follow. And now move back and forth a little bit, warming up. You have 24 vertebra 
in your back. We are inviting each one to open up on the inhale, like the front of a set of drawers, one at a time from the base. And then closing kind of reminds me of like the Pez candy. Okay. Shoot a Pez out on the inhale. And as you exhale, the head tucks and it closes. Exhale, tuck. Good. Right for three potty pedum, anchored feet that you created in knee squeezes. Shoot your knees forward, coming up one vertebra at a time, making a straight line between the knees and the shoulders. And let's stay up and hold this if that's comfortable for you. And exhale, lower down, one vertebra at a time. Beautiful, and we'll do that again. Inhale, tops of the hips are down and back in. Then bring up the spine, nice and slow. Stay up and hold that for a round of breaths. See, that's exhale, lower down again with control. One vertebra at a time. Relaxing the pelvis as you come down. And exhale, draw the hips down and back. Inhale, roll up. And again, don't hold at the top if it's too much for your body. And only go as high up as your body can support. Otherwise, just do baby step steps, micro movements here. And lower back down. Let's draw the knees to the chest. Stretching the low back fascia. It's highly sensitive. And let's do one more set adding arms. We're going to do cactus arms today. So bring your arms up to a T position, bend through. So three potty pedum. We're going to inhale. We're going to reach up. Be mindful if you have shoulder injuries here. This could be really tough. And exhale, lower down, bringing the palms towards the earth in cactus arms. Working some of those muscles through the shoulder girdle. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, lower down. And one more time. Release the arms and just kind of wiggle around just a second. Let's stretch through a pencil stretch. Yoke through the feet. Inhale the arms up overhead. Reach through the right heel, right arm. Lengthen through that side body and switch sides. And go back and forth. Again, wiggling is really great for fascia. Letting go of tension. Be a little silly here. And inhale, bend through the knees, bring the arms back down. This is a good place to stop if you need to go do something else. Otherwise, we're going to just do a couple warm ups for the psoas. With the right leg, inhale, we're going to drag the heel. Nice and slow, lengthening through the leg, yoke through the foot, and bring that back up. If that's easy for you, we're going to do another variation where we hug back. We're going to drop that foot down. So it's hanging a little bit, kind of loosey-goosey. Take a nice big inhale. Exhale, reach through, hovering the leg just over your mat. 
reach nice and long and bring that back up and do that again and then we'll switch sides again keep the foot on the floor and drag it along if that's easier for you i'm going to stay hovering here Soften the foot, let it hang down a little bit, find your loosey-goosey, and then inhale at the top, exhale, lengthen through. Inhale back up, exhale, lengthen. And one more time. Now keep both knees hugged back, Apasana. We're gonna do reclining Gomakasana. Cross the right leg over the left, hug that back. Right to the shins if you like. You can also use a strap here. And exhale, release that and let's switch. Crossing left leg over the right, hug that back. Soft dorsiflexion of the feet here. Release that, and then we'll come into Baddha Konasana, bringing the soles of the feet together. Bring your hands up to the side. Close your eyes. Bring in the breath all the way down into the pelvic bowl. Feeling a connection to the base of your pelvis, aligned, awake. Rooted and strong. And from here, we're gonna drag the feet out together to align the adductors finding a Shavasana. Feel free to lay here for a few minutes. Let it go of conscious control of the breath. And when you're done, you can bring your hands together onto the forehead to close your practice. Namaste. To get up safely, bend through the knees, roll on your right side, come into a reclining child's pose, stem through the left leg, plant the left hand, bring up the head last. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste.